human nature to focus on the near future. Individuals often tend to forget their moral obligation towards their home country. Furthermore, individuals often forget the, ma the big capacity that they carry within to cause major changes. For these reasons, ladies and gentlemen, briefly, we'd like to propose that individuals give up some of their desires to benefit a global society, the development of global society. So now I'd like to welcome you on behalf of Congress. The motion we're debating today is, after graduating from developed countries' universities, students from developing countries should return to their countries of origin for at least four years. Now, in my speech, what, I would, what I'd like to be doing is interpreting the motion for you and then giving you a burden of proof showing you how we believe we will win this debate today. Then I shall discuss our three um, main arguments. The first one shall be about brain drain and its effects on the um, sending country, and by sending country we mean the developing countries. The second argument uh, will, will discuss obligations of, of developing country citizens, both financial obligations and moral obligations. And thirdly, I will be talking about how our side of the house deals with the, prob the problems, the problem solving of developing countries. So now, let's see our burden of proof and the interpretation of the motion. So in this motion, we recognize that this four years is rather an infringement on the individual's uh, freedom, freedom of movement, maybe even freedom of uh, education. However, we believe on this side of the house that if we can show you that the benefit the developing country gets from these four years outweighs the infringements done to the individual that our, our side of the house should stand. So once again, if we can show you that the benefits outweigh the infringement on the um, individuals, we win this debate. Now, moving on to my first argument about um, brain drain. So in the status quo, ladies and gentlemen, what do we see? We see citizens in their home country, the, cre the, the cream of the crop, migrate, um, moving to different parts of the world to get the best education possible. That is completely fine with us. We encourage individuals to seek the, the most beneficial options for themselves. However, let's take a look at what that does to the host country. Those people who go to universities abroad, to de developed countries, are the individuals most likely to cause change. They are the individuals capable of bringing change to the developing country. And if they leave, ladies and gentlemen, there's not going to be anybody on top of the intellectual layer of society. And that's what this motion is about, whether that cream of the crop needs to stay in the developed countries where everything seems to be rather idealistic compared to the developing country. So what we propose in this, um, on this side of the house is that this top layer of society only gives up four years of their lives to benefit their entire country. Ladies and gentlemen, four years compared to a lifetime of the suffering of the developing countries. I think that's a sacrifice that we can take. So now that I've talked about the brain drain argument, I'd like to move on to the obligations. So what do we mean by financial obligation? We mean that each individual from the developing country has received whatever amount regardless of the amount, some kind of support to continue their primary or secondary education. They, they weren't just born and then went to university. They did have to get some kind of support to go to school and then be able to um, apply to universities. So what we see there is that the, from the government's perspective, it's a sort of by the state, for the state. So from the government perspective, individuals are paid for, their education is paid by the state, for the state, and this for the state claim means that they should come back because it's their financial obligation. It's, it's simply not um, justifiable that the individual exploits their own country and then just leaves it abandoned. The government has simply paid too much for that individual to completely abandon the country. And secondly, about the moral obligation. We believe that each and every citizen has a national identity. And this is a national identity, naturally, that you are not able to ever get rid of. You might change your citizenship, you might get dual citizenship, but inside, ladies and gentlemen, I'm always going to be a Hungarian. I can't do anything about that. And I feel that I have a moral obligation to meet those, um, to meet the needs of my country if they're in trouble. Um, unfortunately, in developing countries, this is more of an issue than in Hungary. 
So we believe that it's a more obligation. We believe that it's a more obligation of citizens to return their, to their country and help those less fortunate than them. And now, thirdly, our last argument is the problem solving. So we recognize that in the status quo, there are um, problems. However, what we'd like to do is think locally and not globally, ladies and gentlemen. And let me explain that a little bit. What we mean is that in developing countries, we don't think that it's efficient to cause major changes by UN conventions on rights of migrants. What we believe in is if we send an individual back to an environment in which they're comfortable, in which they know the people, in which they know the language, they, it will be easier for them to spread their knowledge and cause changes locally because they're already culturally integrated. So we're not, we're not saying we'd like to have enforcement from the outside. What we're promoting is that they plant the seed of knowledge in their local areas. And that's why we believe that they need to return for those four years. So for all these reasons, so that the individuals do sacrifice four years of their life to benefit a global community and the development of the world, so that they meet their financial, moral obligations, and that we solve the problems of the developing countries. And to prevent fatal brain drain, I urge you to affirm the motion. Thank you. accepted by the standard of standards of the university they apply to. Okay, thank you. So you, in your perspective, you talked about citizens, and uh, we also would like to ask, should the citizens, as in, if they gain citizenship in these host countries, would they be obliged to go back to these um, nations of origin? Can you repeat your question? So if they become citizens in these host nations, and by studying there for four or five years, by passing university and graduating maybe they gain citizenship. So would these people be obliged to go back also? We're not very interested in the student's private life. So they can become citizens or they can do whatever they'd like. We'd just like to ask them to come back for four years and share the knowledge, the principles, and everything that they've gained abroad. So you're not saying all of them should come back, but a few? I don't believe I said that. I said we don't really, we're not really concerned about their okay. private life and their citizenship. So in your perspective, you've also mentioned the point that by the state, for the state. Yes. Um, From so the government's point of view, citizens okay. are by the state, for okay. the state. So you're saying that states are paying, the government's paying for these uh, migrants' education. Migrants. Issues. Pardon me, not migrants. The people who actually went to these host nations and the students, right? You're 
So you're saying that government is paying for these students? Which the host government is paying for their own students? No, what no. you mentioned was the countries of origin are paying for these. They pay for their education pre-university. So what we said is, you know, before they go to university, they they have to um, uphold public schools and that requires funding. So we're saying the funding pre-university is basis for the financial obligation I have outlined. Okay, thank you. Um, do you, oh, well, we have to return. <laughs> so, so you've also mentioned the point that, um, so the, the resolution states uh, after they graduate university, so would they be obliged to go back um, right after they pass university? Because, because of the fact that they've stayed in these host nations for four or five years, they've already accustomed to these uh, host nations' background and their knowledge and their language. They're you, also you accustomed like to their own, and the less time they spend abroad, the more they'll be able to bring those changes to the local pop, to the local um, zone, since they won't start to forget <laughs> what it's like to live there.
uh, um, free college education was provided by the host nations. Now, moral obligation, these have stated that you cannot change the national identity. However, this is not a reason why you are giving up your opportunities and your uh, future growth and your potential to your um, nations of origin. Now, um, their, their contention was that we need to solve problems and we are going to plan a knowledge locally and things like that. However, they have not provided a link on why the passing this resolution will um, allow these migrants and these students to move back to their own country and plan knowledge, ladies and gentlemen. The resolution directly states that they're just going to move back for four years, but does not specify what they're going to do. They might have just, well, go out for a holiday or just rest there. So moving on to the negative case, we have three contentions bringing on to you today. The first will be about morality and equality that will be degraded through this resolution. Now these migrants and these students might have run away from their country because they have seen horrors of war and all these difficult situations. And if we are making them go back for four years, we're making them re-experience all these horrors they have gone through already. And we do not think this is uh, the right thing to do. Also, we believe that university graduates have probably job landings or are seeking for a job in these host nations. And by making them move to a country, th their country of origin for four years, it greatly decreases their opportunities and greatly decreases their ambition, which is going to be bad. Now, we're not saying that we should discourage a movement to their own country. We're just saying that it's freedom of choice. It's a choice for the students if they want to do so. Now, moving on to our second contention, which is to increase discrimination. Now, we believe that the root cause of discrimination in these host nations is because that we do not view migrants as equally um, as the citizens because they don't have the right um, the rights, because they don't have the education as good as ours, because we do not believe that they are as superior as us. However, um, these migrants who have come to the host nations and who have been able to get the good education, who have been able to graduate from these good nations, of these developed um, good universities, of these developed nations, are the ones who will be able to change the discriminatory attitude of society of the host nations, ladies and gentlemen. And we and by taking all these migrants out, by setting up a block between us and them again, even with the citizens who can contribute to a dis decrease of discrimination, we're actually not changing any discrimination. In fact, we're increasing it in the status quo by the affirmative plan. Now, moving on to our last contention, we believe that this plan will be bad for the nations of origin. We have three sub points for this. First is that these people will be able to grow into bigger people and be able to live up to their full potentials if the resolution were to be passed because they will, because as the affirmative has conceded to the fact that these people might be able to seek for better opportunities and have better experiences if they're in the host nations. And we believe that increased remittances for, will firstly, first of all go into those nations of origin if these people were to grow into bigger people and earn more money and the economic status. And increased remittances mean that the nations of origin will have more money to spend, thereby boost their economy. Second of all, we believe that um, if these people grow into better people, they will be able to create bigger networks and more widespread networks and advocate for their, um, their the interests of their nations of origin on an international stage, which will be very um, good and beneficial for these nations of origin. So point, step point B for this convention is that there will be an increased citizenship application, therefore cutting down um, the cultural ties and extreme, um, completely with the resolution. For these reasons, we beg to oppose. Thank you.
questions. First of all, what type of people leave? What type of people leave? Okay, people who don't want to spend further time in their nation's war because they're being violated somehow or they're not getting treated, they don't think that they're getting treated the way they deserve it. Don't you think that those people need for better education not yes. because there are like horrible conditions in that country? Okay, both of them could be issues. That's where there's, there's so many migration from developing nations, especially because where there's corrupt governments and things like that. All right, and, and do, you know, do you have any idea that there those people uh, stay in, in the layers of the societies who leave that country. Layers of society? Yeah, like uh, upper layer, like more intellectual ones. Sure, those people could leave too. We're not saying like only poor people who are discriminated against and who are not getting treated right in the developing nations room. All right. Um, what do you think, what would happen after that person gets his degree? What happens after? Yeah. Oh, they get a job, they make a lot of there, money. There. Yes. Where he gets a job. Yeah. But there. Where? Oh, yeah. it depends on what he so wants to pursue as his career. It depends on every person. But in the mid-major too? Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't been able to research. It wasn't impromptu debate. Okay. Um, so another question about, you mentioned that there are some pre-college education. Um, and we found it a little bit contradictory, as you said, that there are like horrible conditions. No, I'm saying there's um, pre-university um, education in the host nation, not the nation's war zone. Alright, so, so you mean that person leaves before he gets into the university? Yes, obviously. Obviously, alright. Uh, thank you. And uh, I would like to uh, still continue on this brain game. What do you think if, if, the, if the person leaves, an intellectual person leaves and gets a job in, in the host country? Right, Don't you think it would harm actually the descending country? No, we do not think so because even if the person has a mental capacity to grow into a better person who can contribute more into society, these nations of origin cannot provide that, and that's the why, reason why these intellectuals leave. So, so you are just saying that they should leave the country behind in a mess, and, and they mm -hmm. should never return? Because no, we're saying the that they should, they should move to a country where they can grow into their full potential, and then return or something, or like just send so back remittances. So no or more obligation help. whatsoever. No we, more we should not, not, we, we are not human, we don't have emotions, just leave the family behind and just No, we're not saying leave them behind, level. we're just saying that by your plan we're not going to solve for this because um, if we don't do this we're actually going to benefit more for the nation's origin with remittances and the other examples I've given in my third contention. Thank you. Okay, thank you.
honorable judges, uh, distinguished fellow debaters, hello and welcome. Uh, first of all, I would like to begin my speech by refuting some of the points uh, of the opponents that they brought and some of the points that occurred during cross-examination that I found quite particular. They said that they get a job in the uh, developed country where they have been uh, studying at the university. Well, first of all, I would like to say that this is an, uh, this is an assumption. An assumption, uh, I would like to say, because the job market in the developed countries is already overcrowded. There is domestic labor, uh, there, uh, there are domestic people who are actually uh, learning the same thing as these uh, international students, and there is no guarantee that they, they uh, will be able to get a job in the country where they have studied. Also, there, there is another assumption in uh, there is another assumption in the speech of the first uh, negative speaker that uh, they receive a better uh, they receive uh, some education that they cannot uh, that they, they cannot get education in the in their own uh, home country. And I believe this is also an uh, assumption because I believe that they can indeed get in most cases education in their home country only that they cannot get the uh, same level of education. So we can say that there are indeed universities, you can study what you want to be, you can become a person uh, who is uh, greatly trained, but on the other hand, there, uh, there's Harvard, there's Oxford, there's Cambridge, and all the other prestigious uh, universities which offer a better kind of education. And we have to respect that, that, uh, that, the, uh, that our opponents made an assumption that there is no university and we have to state and clarify that there are universities but they did because they want to get better. Also the fact that they uh, identified with the fact that these students we are talking about are trying to free, uh, flee their own country because they are being abused, they are suffering horrors. I believe that this is a really a small per per percentage of cases and I believe that they only leave their country because they would like a chance for a better education. Uh, yeah, they also made a point about the fact that there, uh, there are, there is an education pre-college, and it is said that uh, it's it, it wasn't by the host nation. It came up in cross uh, examination. It's not provided by the host nation, but uh, by the by the nation of uh, the, the destination nation, uh, which is which is basically the uh, developed country where they learn. But I ask the uh, I ask the question: uh, Are these cases in majority? I mean, like I don't think there are people who just uh, go there uh, into a country. There are too many people who go there into the country when they are like nine. They are raised in the country, a particular country, and then they go to the university in the particular country. I think this is a minority of the cases. I believe that people who are seeking a better education are educated in their own home country until they are 18, 19, wh whatever the school leaving age is from secondary education. And I believe firmly, and here I would like to start to reconstru uh, reconstruct our own arguments, that the uh, individual has a financial obligation towards the country which is paid for all his or her education so far. So nobody is like, uh, nobody like pops up like 80 years old and they go to university and they do not have any obligation to the country uh, where they have been raised. They receive the first and foremost uh, primary and secondary education in uh, their own country. And the opponents brought out the point that this uh, education uh, is not really good and that's why they are trying to leave. I believe that this education can be wonderful. This education can indeed be one of the best educations that you can get. Preliminary education. Universities are a totally and wholly other different thing. Universities have been around for, for centuries and there are indeed better universities in other countries for example, there can be better universities in other countries than uh, the country of one's own. Uh, also, I would like to emphasize the fact that uh, the team, uh, team affirmative have a, put a heavy emphasis on the harmful effects of brain break. We have to see that the people who actually leave the country to get a better education abroad are the people who are capable of making a change. Making a change is something that is needed by the country, uh, country of origin because uh, the individuals only leave because they cannot uh, get the, uh, that level of education in the home country. If they can receive that education in the home country, there is no need for them to leave. And I believe, uh, I firmly believe, and uh, I, urge, I urge the judges uh, to listen to me when I say that when 
the, these people come back and help and share their knowledge. Actually, uh, this is one of the responses to uh, a question of the negative team where they said that they do not see how these people uh, act when they come back. They just lie on the beach or have a vacation. vacation. Uh, I would like to say, I would like to say that uh, they share the knowledge and they educate their own people. And also I would like to emphasize the fact that who is there better to do it? They are already familiar with the culture, they do not have to learn the language, and they are part of the integral society. For all these reasons, I would like to urge the judges strongly to affirm the motion. Thank you very much. without being one of the best. And if they attend schools that are, uh, in your definition, not good enough, then they fail the test, they fail the, the requirements right, that exactly. are presented. Isn't that why these people who actually get into the developed nations colleges um, being educated on primary and secondary education in the host nations themselves? Uh, that is not the majority of the cases. You stated that. Do you have, and a, word I that? Do you have a word for that? Excuse me? Like, what's your reasoning behind the fact that the majority of get prestigious education from these um, developing nations who can not really support their citizens. So could you repeat your point? I, I don't get it. Okay, so, okay, never mind. I'll just move on to the next Okay, thank you. Okay, so you have stated that people will go back to their country and start educating people and build infrastructure and things like that in the um, nation's world, correct? Yes, that is correct. Okay. So if these people do not want to voluntarily move into their whole, um, nations of origin and start helping them, why What's your reasoning behind the fact that they will go when forced and start educating people there? Uh, that actually is uh, one of the definitions that they have to go back. And, on the, uh, uh, and I would like to say that there is uh, some obligation that they have to face. So if the state, uh, if the country of origin has provided them with a preliminary education, primary and secondary education, they've, they've sacrificed a lot of money in order to be able to right. bring them up to a level where they can get into a foreign uh, university in a de right. developed country, then I believe uh, firmly that uh, they have an obligation to return something to that state. And do okay. not leave okay. the state if these in these people have that obligation uh, like engraved in their minds, why don't they just go back voluntarily? A lot of them do, actually. Uh, a lot of them do go back. There are some people who uh, do not go back because they get, a uh, few of them, get uh, better job opportunities and they decide to stay. Or there are people who, for example, uh, meet, meet, uh, uh, meet other people and they do not wish to leave uh, their friends behind or something. Okay, so, like but even if, okay, so if like, we force these people who develop new connections, who have great jobs in these host nations, who we force them to go back to the developing nations, how can you guarantee that these people will step up and help educate the people of these developing mm -hmm. nations? Thank you. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, as the second speaker for the negative, I will first go over the answers of the answers of the proposition and then go over their case and their extension together as just their case. So basically, they first stated that job spots are over flooded in developed countries and thus they will not be thus it is not a guarantee. However, the job opportunities in developed countries are far better and far more than the job opportunities in developing countries, and that's why we win this point. Um, they also stated that abuse is only a small percentage. And they have not really given us any um, evidence or any reasoning behind this. And even so, every single life counts. And they are saying that just because a bit of the people are getting abused, we should ignore it. However, our side believes that every single person counts. And they're just ignoring all these lives and they're risking the dangers of these lives. They have stated that people are educated in their own country before moving. This is a big assumption because of the fact that um, this is a big assumption. They have not given us any reasoning, um, any um, evidence. I, I do realize that this is an impromptu debate. However, they need to provide reasoning behind why so. Because a lot of the migrants these days are getting education like me when they come at an at a early age to get the education of um, uh, elementary school and secondary school before their university in developed nations. So their assumption doesn't really count. So basically, that's their answers to our case, and none of them stand. And so going back to their case, they have first stated the fact that their burden is to make sh is to prove to you that the benefits outweigh the violations of human rights. However, we have already won the, uh, won the burden because of the fact that you can never put a price on human rights. They are violating the, they have, they have um, conceded to the fact in the first speech that they, are, they could be violating and they are violating the freedom of choice, the freedom of movement. And they have already conceded to this. So the fact that they can't, that the fact that you can't put a price tag on human rights and the fact that they have already agreed that they are going against human rights, we have already won this um, burden. So the opposition has, er has already taken this debate. However, going into their first, uh, however, going into their case, their first contention dealt with brain drain. However, they are only looking at the negative side of brain drain, and as the opposition, we are looking at the positive side of brain drain. And the, we believe that the positive side of brain drain far outweighs the negative side of brain drain for the simple reason of remittances. Remittances is when all these um, workers, all these brains go into developed countries and they get more job opportunities, more pay, better pay. Then they can send these, these money back to their countries of origin and that helps to stimulate the economy of that developing nation. And it has been proven by the World Bank in 2006 that remittances have totaled of three times the amount of total foreign aid. Thus, we can conclude that remittances are a very essential part of um, uh, help to the of uh, origin. Um, basically, it is a win-win situation. So developed nations get more labor force and the developing countries get um, more remittances, thus it is a win-win. You get happier university students because they get more opportunities. You get a happier country of origin. You get a happier host country and you get a happier family because they can see their child being more successful in these developed countries. So it, in the opposition world, it is a very positive place. Um, secondly, they have stated that we have an obligation. They stated that it is by the state, for the state, and this was based on assumption that every single person going over into university has received um, a pre-university education in the country of origin. However, I myself didn't receive my education in my, in my, my pre-university education in my country of origin. So their assumption obviously is uh, very faulty and does not, so thus their um, point about how it's by the state, for the state falls. Um, and they also stated that uh, they have a moral obligation because they have a, they cannot give up their nationality. However, this is not a reason to give up the uh, opportunity to be successful, to be able to provide remittances for their country of origin. And their third contention basically said um, we would deal with the problems of developing countries. They stated that we would send people where they are comfortable. That is what the constructive speech stated. However, we have shown you that. Um, a lot of the, uh, some of the students can be running away because of dangers, and if we if we go with the proposition's resolution, they're basically sending all these students back where they could be killed, where they could be put back into war because of conscription, and because of all these reasons, they're risking the lives of all these talented um, brains. And also, they said that all these um, uh, students will plant the seed of knowledge in the country of origin. However, again, this is an assumption. There is no link. How can they prove that all these students will not just go back and have a rest for four years? So basically, their idea of planting a seed doesn't really count. Um, so basically, all, their whole case falls, their answers fall, and all of the points of the opposition still stand. It is very unfair. Human rights always outweigh the benefits of the economy. Second, we will, uh, the revolution will increase discrimination. Three, it is bad for the country of origin if we go with the um, 
proposition resolution, and because of the fact that we provide all the benefits and human rights, the opposition has won this debate. Thank you. Cross-examination with an easy question. What's the meaning of life? Meaning of life? <laughs> yes. Life is life. <laughs> I can't Actually, really define. Every Actually, every life can do anything. Okay. So what really what motivates people? Do you think it's success that would motivate you in general? Well, it's different for everybody, but most of the time, I guess. It's but the intellectual miners that we're discussing today are mainly motivated by success. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. To also help and. Okay, that's that's great, thank you. And you, you said that if those intellectual migrants are successful, we're going to have a happier host country, right? And a happier and university student, and a happier family, and a happier country of origin. Right, that's, that's awesome. But why would that make the whole country happier if one student has gotten a scholarship to Harvard? Please explain to me that. Why would why would why would a host nation rejoice all of a sudden because one of their citizens has gotten a scholarship to Harvard? One of their citizens, a country of origin. Why would they be happy? Yes. If uh, well, obviously they then if they go to Harvard, they can get a better job opportunity to have more pay, and then they can. I'm send talking about the back. country rejoicing over an individual they don't even know. Why would that make them happy if they're still in a developing country suffering the problems that they've been suffering? Why would that make him happy? The country of religion? Yes, well, let's move on, because I don't think I'll get an answer from you on that. Okay, so you said every single life counts, right? Yeah. Okay, but by life, I feel like you're narrowing the definition down to this intellectual migrant. No, every single person, every single Okay, so wouldn't you agree, if there is a way we can implement local people to fix problems in developing countries, we should do that because every life counts. Because do you agree that there are problems in developing countries? Yes, but however, your okay. your resolution and your proposal is not working to fix those problems. Okay, well, we'll see about that in our third affirmative speech. But do you agree that there are problems um, in developing countries? Yes. Okay, so do you think it's the priority of the country of origin citizens to just get a better job opportunity abroad? If there are part. Okay, so you said that there are better job opportunities abroad, correct? Yeah. Okay, but we're arguing a moral case. And the question I'm asking you is, if an individual can take those four years, go back and help, why shouldn't they? Because they can be more helpful in the developed nation to get a better job opportunity. Which For will themselves. increase remittances and will be sent back to the country of your And that will be argument. more helpful I'm than sorry, that person working second. in the country. This is circular argument. They're going to be able to help because they'll have better job opportunities. That's a selfish cause, isn't it? 
No, because they could send remittances back to their country of origin. Send money back? Send remittances. Okay. Um, you also said in your... Can I finish with you? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Should and would. But what was the debate about? Was it about basic human rights? Was it about violating basic human rights? Well, sure, it was about. We are asking a lot and we are facing this. We know it's a big deal by saying that those people who actually left to a greater education for a better university to come back and return for at least four years. But, ladies and gentlemen, we believe, Team Hub Humanity strongly believes that actually it would lead to something better, something greater. We would actually achieve uh, a better world and a, a better globe by asking those people to, to, give some, uh, uh, to give up something and return to their uh, original country for at least four years. And after that, they can leave. We are not saying that they should stay forever. All right, uh, first of all, I would like to go through our arguments again. And, and mention some uh, refutes, rebuts that Team Negative mentioned. And, well, let's begin. Uh, our first argument was about brain drain. And I think we have to analyze this argument again because it, it didn't, well, get through that easily. So we are saying that uh, there's a person in a developing country, that person is an intellectual person, that person is highly educated, and it, it is proven by, by showing that that person could actually leave the country and get into a really, really prestigious and good university. So that person goes to that university, gets his education or her education, and then that person should return to the country. And why? Because that person should give the knowledge and experiences that, that he or she learned in that, uh, in that university. And simply by not returning, what would happen? That person leaves that country behind and that if, if there is a poor country, 
but that, that all the persons live who are capable to make a change, to make a difference, to bring a better future for everyone in that country, what would happen to that country? That country would be in a great big, big mess. So we are asking those people to come back, share the knowledge, pass the information, and, and share the experience. And then they said, all right, uh, then what if they return? They wouldn't do anything. They just, I don't know, uh, lying on the beach and, and have a vacation. But ladies and gentlemen, face it seriously, this problem. That person just earned his, his degree from a university. That person does not have an income. That person wouldn't just lying on the beach and doing nothing. That person would search for a job or something to, to earn money, actually. So we are, th uh, we are thinking that that person wouldn't just, I don't know, having a vacation in the country. That's, that's insane, uh, assuming that. All right, our second argument was about obligations both moral and, and financial. Uh, we are thinking about the financial obligation that that person who is educated, that person was educated in, in the, uh, in the sending, so-called sending country. So that person got a uh, fairly good primary and secondary education, which of course uh, cost a lot of money. So, that, so, so the government, the nation, actually invested money into that person and what that nation receives? Nothing if that person uh, doesn't return for four years of university. So that person should uh, uh, return because of financial obligation and also that person should feel it inside in his or her heart because of moral obligation. As my partners and colleagues stated that every one of us has a national identity and we cannot just simply forget about that. We, we are humans and we are uh, feeling responsibility towards each other. Uh, and that's why they should return and actually help those people. And our last argument was about how it could actually benefit the, the local community and how it could benefit later on the global community. So we are simply saying, uh, we are simply saying that they should return and they should help the poor and, and they should help uh, his or her, her country because if they are simply staying in that country and then they say that okay they can help that country by, by simply sending money back to their family but ladies and gentlemen if you have a good and they assume that by they having a good uh, job then what would they do? Living separately and living behind his or her family? No, they would ask the family to come and join him or her in the country and, and they would actually not send back money to, uh, and remittances to the original country. So actually, I think uh, we believe the best and only uh, solution uh, is that we actually promote it by simply staying in the country for at least four years. I know it's a big deal, it's, it's a huge favor, but it simply would work, we believe. Thank you.
question side, we would like to sum up the debate and state the reasons why we have won this debate already. Okay, so when, when this debate started, they basically um, said that uh, the, the burden of the affirmation um, and the only reason the affirmation would win is that the development of nations of origin outweighs the human rights violations of individuals. However, we believe that opposition has already won this case because of the fact that we have proven to you uh, before all these speeches, before, so in the first constructive and second constructive, that uh, we already rewarded all their cases and uh, we, uh, we believe that um, human, uh, human rights can't be, there shouldn't be a price uh, uh, put on the human rights. So they basically had one theme for their entire, contest of entire case, which is nations of origin benefits by passing this resolution. But we the opposition side believe that we have already proven to you in our cases that remittances will solve this problem. They will benefit these uh, uh, developing countries by sending, ba sending back remittances from these educated people, the successful people who have gained their um, job opportunities in these host nations. Um, and we can see the point that uh, we should raise the economic status of the host nation, uh, the developing nations, as well. So we can see to this point, and as well, we add to the point that we can provide uh, protect the right to choice and the freedom of choice of these individuals. Um, we would like to also mention the point. We would like to go over our what of their contention, which is the fact that. They mentioned brain drain. However, brain drain isn't a problem, and the, in the data in the 3A, they mentioned brain drain is good. But however, we've mentioned in our second constructive that uh, three times of, uh, three times the, the the money that goes into the host nations will go back uh, to the developing world as the remittances said the World Bank. And there are better job opportunities in these host nations and therefore, better job opportunities means better opportunities for these successful people, these brains in these developing worlds to move into these host nations to have the better job opportunities and have higher income to send back these money, this right to back to their families in these um, countries of origin. They also mentioned financial and moral obligation, but this is also solved by our remittances because even if they lived in their, uh, their countries of origin, uh, until elementary or until until graduation of their high school, it doesn't matter because they will contribute to the economy of these developing nations by sending back their money, their income to their families. They also mentioned more obligation, but this is also solved by remittances. Um, they also mentioned in their third contention, problem solving. Okay, let's give an example, ladies and gentlemen. So let's say that uh, this person uh, that moved to host nation um, became a computer technician. They kept mentioning the point that they should share the knowledge and share the experience in these um, developing words, but th this is not the case because we, when we do not pass this resolution, they can er earn more high income and get by getting jobs and send back money to the families. And it, it doesn't, uh, the thing is that they can't just benefit uh, for four years in these developing nations because of the fact that they can they can be more uh, successful and be a bigger person in these host nations better than staying in these uh, developing nations for only four years. So we would like to go back and restate the reason why we have already won this debate. The thing is, the, what the proposition is saying, that we should have these uh, successful people go back to these developing nations, but we the opposition ask the question to the judges and the audience, why do, we, why do they need to be forced to go back? We only have one life and the opposite, in the opposition world, we value every human being, every life, and we believe that it is such a huge favor that the, um, the students cannot take and therefore students should not be uh, so forced to give up their freedom of choice and give up their four years of life that can be successful in their lives in these host nations. So therefore, those are the reasons why we have won this debate today. Thank you.